Hey guys, my name is Vanilla, and welcome back to my first review on something that the other people like, books. Now, now you might be all thinking, Vanilla, this is not a game review, you're not even using that voice you use in your show. Now I know that reviewing books is something new to this channel, but I'm just going to say that I am still reviewing games in this channel. I just want to test this whole thing out, because other than making my stupid videos that I make, I would read books in my spare time. And the most liked video in my channel is not even an episode from the Vanilla Show, but rather an educational video I did for school. So I thought that some of the people out there might want to see me do more videos about topics that can be more relatable in a more serious manner. So I thought that books will be that thing I need. Now, if you don't like books and prefer games instead, you can visit my Vanilla Show playlist where in I review games in a very ridiculous way. So if you're still here, don't expect any funny things and animation I do in my Vanilla Show. It's just me sitting down with you guys, because I would like to save all of my clever jokes in that show instead of this. So let's begin. On Natural Creatures by Neil Gaiman is one of the first things that caught my eye when I went to the bookstore. This book holds a collection of stories that are made by different authors that all have one similar trope in a story, which is an unnatural creature. Now keep in mind that these stories were made around the 20th century and the early 2000s, so I was a bit skeptical to whether or not will the stories in this book hold interest to this day, including the teenagers who want to find a reading, and I have to say that it is more of a hit than miss. But when the stories do hit you, they really make you want to hit, read more of it. If we're explaining some of the stories in this book, I want to acknowledge that the one who collected the stories in this book, Neil Gaiman, was also the creator to the book called Coraline, which I still haven't read. But after watching the stop motion movie that was based on the book, it made me want to read the book itself. In fact, I think that Coraline was actually the first stop-motion movie I'd seen, so you could say that Neil Gaiman is not just some other author. So back to the book. One of my favorite stories was Prismatica, which I liked because it was long enough to understand the story's plot and characters. Prismatica is also all about Amos, who came to his local tavern one night when he saw someone that the story describes as the Grey Man. Amos accepted an offer wherein he have gold in exchange for retrieving all three parts of a mirror. Amos didn't know why he wanted all the three parts of the mirror, until he met a man locked in the Grey Man's ship named Jack. He told Amos wh about why the Grey Man wanted the mirror plate pieces, which I won't spoil to you guys in this video. So they went all on this adventure on which I would say is actually interesting. Prismatica is one of the longest stories in this book, but it's actually worth, was worth reading. Another story that I like in the book is, well, for a special reason. What if I tell you that this book will actually make you're afraid of a dot. This is what the story here has to offer. What's the title? Well, you're looking at it right now in the right side. This story is the first one that you will find in the book. Man, did it made me want to read this entire book. I admire the story because I could tell you that this was the most creative story that I've seen in the book. This is a very horrifying story to read. The unnatural creature in this book is a black dull dot that slowly gets bigger as the story progresses. There were actually pictures of this dot scattered around the pages and when I saw it, I tried my best not to touch it with my finger. <laughs> like, what the heck? I had to keep reminding myself that it's just a freaking dot. A freaking dot! So anyway, great story and very creative. Now the book did have a little bit of negatives, like the use of very big words. Now call me dumb, but would you know what a flight stick is? How about the G-Man? In the story in the book, called The Flight of the Horse, the story tries to describe the time machine that was present in the plot, and I can hardly picture in my mind what the time machine actually looks like. I don't want to read a story that I can barely understand. It would really make me bored. Not to mention that they expect a teen to read this. Yes, I do mean that. I actually found it in this teen section of the bookstore. Another story to point out is The Cartographer Wasps and the Anarchist Beasts, which is a fable that I found in the book. Now what I could say about the story is that it was one of the most boring stories that I'd ever read through. Now, I'm not against fables or anything. I had read a book filled with Aesop's fables and I haven't, ne I've never bored me. So what was the story about? Bees and wasps. I do not know what else I can make of the story. It was only 13 pages long, but that 13 pages almost made me give up on reading the whole entire book. The vocabulary in the story was so complicated I can't even make out what the story was about. Heck, 
And maybe you think that the author would say that the whole story was just a joke in the end. But that didn't happen. I don't know why the story ended up in this book. All the, the stories, except this one, are understandable. And I can even summarize all of them. But this one? Don't make me tell you about it. But even if the cartographer wasps and the anarchist beefs didn't appeal to me, the good stories in this book really have good characters. Calmly the Death was the last story of this book, and what I can tell you about this story is that it really gave the touching ribbon to the story. It was all about an old lady in England named Lady Neville who wanted to make a party like no other. So what did she do? She invited the man himself, Death. However, the most ironic thing about the story is that the most touching character in the story is actually Death itself. Why? Well, first of all, the story portrays Death as a young girl in her teen years, not some old grim man. Second of all, the story really, really describes Death as sweet and innocent in a very admiring way. Heck, if this story was made in the present time, I would see people making fan art about Death. Not that I really want to see that, but the fact that they made one of the most deadliest creatures in fiction into a sweet and charming girl is a very daring but creative move. But the ending to the story was as great as watching an anime. I don't want to spoil the ending, but I do recommend that you buy this book, Escape Over the Cartographer Wasp and the Anarchist Bees, and you are settled to have a good time reading this book. There's still many stories in this book that I haven't talked over, so you can still expect to find new stories in this book. That's all for the time guys, and I will see you next time. Thank you.